All right, guys. So Donald Trump has just walked away with a very big, unexpected win. And I can tell you for a fact, Letitia James is not happy about this. In fact, uh, we've already heard Letitia James pretty much firing back at the appellate court's um, uh, decision today regarding uh, Donald Trump's case. OK, we're talking about the four hundred fifty four million dollar case. Uh, the $454 million judgment that was uh, assessed to Donald Trump. And originally it was actually $355 million. But when you add everything that's, um, you know, all the different fines, interest, fees, you're at close to half a billion dollars. OK, so last week, for those of you guys who don't know, um, Trump's lawyers announced that they were able they were unable to come up with the bond amount. Right. So the bond amount was like $450 million at the time. And they basically said that despite scouring the market, OK, despite scouring the market, we have been unsuccessful in our effort to obtain a bond for the judgment amount uh, for the defendants um, for the simple reason that obtaining an appeal bond for four hundred sixty four million dollars is a practical impossibility under the circumstances presented. OK, now. This is exactly what Letitia James wanted. This is exactly what Judge uh, Arthur Engeron of New York City wanted. They knew what Donald Trump's cash balance was, or they had a very close ballpark based on some figures that uh, many people argue they should never have had, because this is, this is honestly probably what they based this fine off of, because the goal was to wipe out Donald Trump so he can't compete against President Joe Biden in the 2024 elections, right? So anyway, after an appeals court ruled today that Donald Trump could actually proceed with a much lower amount, much lower than this $454 million penalty against him in the civil fraud case, New York Attorney General Letitia James, she pretty much fired back at President, President Biden, <laughs> President Trump. So basically, this is what she said in a statement, quote, Donald Trump is still facing accountability for his staggering fraud. The court has already found that he engaged in years of fraud to falsely inflate his net worth and unjustly enrich himself, his family and his organization. The four hundred and sixty four million dollar judgment plus interest against Donald Trump and the other defendants still stands. Now, for a lot of you guys, I, I want to break this down so you so we, we can understand what's happening here. The bond has been reduced down to uh, they, they dropped it like 60 percent. Um, I'm going to get into that, in, into those details in a second. But what, what I want you to understand here is that last month, Judge Arthur Engeron, he ruled in favor of Letitia James far left. I mean, Letitia James is about far left as you can go. I mean, she, she almost fell off the earth the other day uh, as far left as she's gone. Anyway, so. Uh, Judge Arthur Engeron ruled in favor of Letitia James' lawsuit against Donald Trump, his sons, his whole family, basically, um, Eric Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., the Trump Organization, over allegations that the former president inflated the value of his properties and his own net worth by billions of dollars on financial statements provided to banks and insurers to secure deals, to make deals, and to secure loans. That's what this whole this was this really the basis of this trial. And it's so weak. It's such a weak trial. OK, and <laughs> Alina Haba is going to get this thrown out. I, I, I put money on it that Alina Haba, the moment they can uh, get this appeal going, they're going to get this whole thing thrown out. It's going to be egg all over uh, Letitia James and Judge Arthur Engeron's face. Um, so anyway, the former president who maintains his innocence was ordered to pay over $400 million in penalties and has been barred from conducting business in New York for three years. OK, now in an effort to pursue an appeal, the former president was seeking he was trying to get a bond of $464 million in order to cover his fines and this disgorgement for his sons. Right. Now, although Trump can appeal the ruling against him without a bond or paying the cash, the former president would actually be required to post a bond of slightly more than the amount of the penalty against him in order to stop the collections of his assets. So here's the thing. The, the reason why this bond was so big 
is not because he couldn't is not because it was a requirement to uh, begin the appeal process or to file an appeal. The biggest problem was is even if there's an appeal uh, in process, there was nothing as of today that would have stopped Letitia James from being able to go after Donald Trump's assets. And he's got a lot of assets. He's got properties, uh, you know, Mar-a-Lago, Trump Tower, 40 Wall Street, uh, way up in um, uh, north, uh, just north of Manhattan, all over New York. He's got a property in, uh, I want to say, uh, Los Angeles. He's got a property, California. So he's got properties in a lot of different places. And unfortunately, according to the data that we have, Letitia James has the ability to seize assets pretty much um, everywhere, wherever his assets happen to be, bank accounts and whatnot. And so, uh, yeah, so basically posting the bond effectively stiff arms Letitia James' ability to seize his property, to seize his assets, right? So anyway, uh, Trump was required to post his bond by Monday today in order to stop Letitia James from collecting his assets and his properties, right? Now, as of today, very good news came out. New York City uh, Appeals Court gave Donald Trump 10 more days to be able to post a $175 million bond and be able to satisfy the judgment in this New York City civil fraud case, which is a much smaller total number than initially required, but it's still $175 million. And it's it's still not wiping out the $464 million with like $112,000 per day in interest racking up. That doesn't go away. But what they've done is the, I think what the appeal, what they're trying to do here is, and I want to thank you guys so much for hitting the like button for these videos, for sharing these videos. I, I honestly think that they're worried about the public opinion. They're worried about not looking fair to the public. They know that there's a 2024 election coming up. Donald Trump's the front runner for the Republican Party. Uh, Biden is the you know incumbent who wants to get the reelection. If they look too unfair, it's just blatantly obvious. And I think that might be why they decided to lower this uh, this this initial bond requirement down to 175 million dollars. So it's still a ridiculous amount. I still think that they're going to get this thing wiped out. Uh, clearly, Letitia James is not happy because she she was drooling. She was salivating over uh, Donald Trump's property. She wanted to get a little grubby hands on her 40 Wall Street building and, you know, kind of flick the little flick the, the gold T-R-U-M-P off the front of the building. It's not going to happen now. It's not going to happen. She's got. So basically, and here's the other thing. So he couldn't, Donald Trump wasn't able to get a $464 million bond because basically around the world, they scoured through like 30 different bond companies. The bond companies didn't even offer it. It wasn't even an option. They're like, hey, uh, Trump, <laughs> uh, sorry, buddy, but we've never, ever, ever in life, in, 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 in the history of our business, ever had to issue a $464 million bond. The highest bond amount he was able to get um, was like $100 million. And it wasn't even due to his uh, financial standing. It wasn't a, a, a result of him not being able to secure the bond due to uh, lack of credit or lack of credentials. It's that the lending institutions, they just don't do that amount. So you want to talk about uh, a, breach of, uh, a breach of Amendment 8 of the 8th Amendment? There you go. And Donald Trump, he was actually in New York today uh, because basically that you got the New York City uh, hush money case, which is set to start April 15th. Not sure if you guys are aware of that, but former President Donald Trump, he's basically going to be standing trial April 15th on charges related to hush money payments um, that were actually meant to cover up claims of marital infidelity. A New York, a New York judge ruled on Monday. And um, basically, uh, assuming that the date holds, the decision from Judge Juan Merchin ensures that the prosecution will be the first of four criminal cases against Donald Trump, Donald Trump to reach a trial. OK, with the presumptive Republican uh, nominee facing a jury in the city, uh, basically where he built his entire empire, where he built 
the Trump name. So his first trial looks like it's going to be the hush money trial with, um, I want to say, what was the woman's name? Uh, Stormy Daniels. I think it was, I think her name is Stormy Daniels. Um, so that is set for April 15th. So it looks like he, Donald Trump was actually in New York city today, uh, for that trial. Uh, let's see. Basically, the trial has been the, the hush money trial has been in limbo after a last minute document dump caused the postponement of the original date. That's what happened. OK. And uh, in setting jury selection for April 15th, Merchin uh, bristled that. Uh, OK. All right. So basically, they're saying that uh, what he suggested were baseless claims by Trump's lawyers that prosecutors intentionally fail to pursue tens of thousands of pages of records. Okay, so April 15th, guys, it's going to be a big day. It's going to be a very big day. We're going to see where this goes. And again, you know, it's more the witch hunt. They're, they're, they're trying to take Trump down. They're running out of time and um, they're running out of books to throw at this guy. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens. And it, it's wild because this hearing took place on the same day that a New York appeals court granted Trump some very good news by agreeing to hold off on their collection on the $454 million civil fraud judgment. And it puts him in a position where he's got 10 more days now to come up with $175 million uh, instead of the 464. So I'm going to keep you guys posted. Let me know what you guys think about this. Share this video. This is very good news. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is when the, the, the appeals court, man, if, if, if they've lowered this bond, I really feel like this is just the beginning. This is the onset of good news for Trump. They're going to review this, 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 this judgment from Judge Arthur Engeron, who happens to have a crap load of um, overturned judgments in his uh, ruling history. They're going to look at this thing and they're going to say, you know what? This is not fair. And this is not good for New York City. This is not good for New York City. They're going to have to overturn this thing. So I'm going to keep very close tabs on Alina Haba because I know she's going to be driving this thing like real hard. She's going to be going hard for Donald Trump. So I'm going to keep an eye on Alina Haba on this uh, New York appeals, uh, this New York appeal for the $464 million uh, judgment. I'm going to keep up y'all posted. I got another video that I'm getting ready to drop for you guys. You guys are not going to want to miss that one. Make sure your notifications are turned on. Hit the notification bell. Also drop a like for the video. I totally appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all in a minute.